We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I'm the Partnerships and Community Manager here at All Voices. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome our next guest onto the show, Eileen Benwich. She is the EVP Chief Talent Officer at Horizon Media. Eileen, thanks so much for being here. If you want to share a little bit about yourself for our audience, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Hi, Christina. Thanks for having me. I love, I love the conversation. I love the topic. It's super relevant. Um, it's probably one of the most timeless topics, I would say. Uh, well, first, I'll say my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, and in terms of that question, I always hated that question. <laughs> I, I still, still like the question. I never liked it when I was younger um, because I was one of those kids who was quite lost and I was confused. And I always tell people that I didn't arrive on the planet until I was in my late 20s. And so I was on a very much on a different path. And I think it's fair to say that I evolved much later in life. And so I didn't have a lot of direction. I didn't really have like a vision as to what, how I saw myself in the future. Um, I also dropped out of college after my sophomore year. Uh, it just wasn't working for me. Um, part of the issue I was a horrible student. Um, and I was just really eager to start working. I always wanted to, I always wanted to work. Um, so along the way, I took many courses at NYU. Uh, I got certified in two different certifications to be an executive coach. And I just, I was very much that person who learned on the job. Uh, and so I wanted to get working straight away. And that's what I did. So I dropped out of college. I started working. And I just worked my way. And I can't say that I had a master plan to become a chief talent officer, but because of the experiences I had along the way, and we'll talk, I know we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, throughout the conversation, I evolved. No, absolutely. And now I believe you've been at Horizon Media for a bit of time, at least 16 years. So I want to ask how your personal journey has really led you to Horizon Media and now Chief Talent Officer. Yeah, I mean, I've been, it's been almost 17 years that I've uh, been at the company, working very closely with Bill Konigsberg, the CEO and founder. The company's been around for 32 years. So I like to have just about 50% of the success <laughs> of the journey, uh, which is, is quite a quite a successful run. And it's a great, it's been a great story and great experience for me. I think, I think deep down, I always felt that I needed to prove myself uh, because I was one of the rare folks within an organization that didn't have a degree. So I pushed myself really hard. Uh, I was always surrounded by super smart, creative people. And I knew that I wanted to be in the creative sector and started my career at a film company. Thereafter, I joined a PR agency. And from there on, I've always been in the agency ecosystem. So I would say that I'm very much an agency uh, professional. Uh, and it's not for the lighthearted, I'll say, because um, <laughs> uh, agencies are quite challenging because it is in the service business. Uh, but you have to be able to thrive in that environment. Um, I entered HR actually working um, in recruitment. Um, and I was always fortunate to work for very strong women, and they always invited me to have a seat at the table, even if it was just to observe and learn. And I am an experiential learner, so I'm able to really pick up a lot in my surroundings, being exposed and integrate that into how I show up and, and doing what I do. Uh, so I was very, very fortunate, and it taught me tons. I'm also quite curious, and I think this experience led me to be a generalist. Recruitment's a great way in because you're bridging talent and hiring managers, and it's really important that you know everything that's going on in the organization and with the specific teams and making that match. So you really gain a lot of information and insight that you can leverage to propel yourself into an HR career beyond recruitment. And then my career just kind of built with great momentum. Um, over the years. And on a more personal note, um, as a child, I always found myself in leaderships, leadership positions. I'm not exactly sure why, but from a very young age, I was always selected or nominated into these positions of leadership. And it does beg the question around, are leaders, are you born a leader or is it something that you can nurture along the way? Uh, I don't, I think it's both. I think it's a bit of both to, to answer the question. Um, and I also found myself always in situations where that required building. Like oh, I was always creating something from nothing. And that really propelled my career 
and gave me the confidence struggles. I, I find I'm quite comfortable being uncomfortable. And that has just led to my success over the years. And I think all of these experiences in tandem has contributed to my journey and the success that I've had over the years. Absolutely. And I can definitely rate being, you know, an experiential and visual learner as well. And as a leader of the company, you're also an architect of the company culture as you're continuing to grow and change. And you mentioned too that, you know, agencies are not for the light, lighthearted. Um, can you define really what a healthy or unhealthy company culture is in your opinion? Yeah, sure. Uh, and I think it's different for it's probably different for every sector, but actually I'm gonna I'm gonna take that back a bit because we're all the same, we're all people, we all strive for I think a lot of commonality. And so I think it's a great question and certainly quite timely considering all that employers are grappling with as a result of COVID. But I'm gonna focus on the healthy. So let's just focus on what it takes to be a healthy culture and the opposite is what not to do. <laughs> so um, the companies that get it right, and I think Horizon has, is one that has moved away from the hierarchical leadership model to a more collaborative and grassroots approach. When hiring smart for potential drive and really hiring for the whole person. And what I mean by that is meeting, hiring not just for cognitive and exact experience only, which I think was what was done years ago, right. but really hiring for diversity in all ways, diversity of experience, diversity of thought, diversity of personal interests and hobbies and curiosity. And for those who really want to be a part of community, because we know now more than ever before that the importance of networking and the camaraderie and feeling connected is vital. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if you think about all those ingredients, that's the recipe for a healthy organization. And in a lot of ways, as a talent leader, I think my job is super easy. It sounds crazy <laughs> that I'm saying that, particularly in these times. It's also quite hard. But in terms of culture, the easy part is if we can simply make the space for employees to show up and engage, provide opportunity that spans all possibilities, not just what you're hired for. And you have an unencumbered environment and you can create an unencumbered environment, your culture will thrive because you want to make the room for people to show up. Most people want to engage. They want to be part of something. They don't want to be compartmentalized and now more so than ever before. So I think if you can create the space and allow people the room to contribute in ways that matter to them, you're on the right path. I think what's also important is to stay away from the unimportant minutia <laughs> that can sometimes get in the way. And that's that unencumbered part, which is creating less obstacles, creating a positive anything is possible opportunity and mindset, I think goes a long way. And thinking big picture and having a long-term view versus a short-term view. Sometimes, and I've seen it over the years in my career, that sometimes we get so reactive, we focus on just what's in front of us, which doesn't always have the long-term effect that we want it to have. So I think having that long-term view is really, really important. I think the other thing that's key is, and I, I know that I'm driven by this personally, is the sense of relevancy. And we really have to ensure that we have a pulse both internally and externally on what matters in, in your community. So for example, if you think about what matters today, and we know the challenges that the marketplace that we all are experiencing in the marketplace, it's only two years that it shifts. And boy, has it shifted. Yeah. I mean, the culture, the requirements, what employees are looking for, it is completely turned on its head. And it's remarkable. And I think it's super invigorating and exciting. And it, it is also quite overwhelming. But if we don't adapt and pivot to ensure relevancy, then you're, you're going to struggle even more so. And it's certainly hard enough currently. But I think the ability to pivot and pivot quickly and have the awareness of what's going on is essential. I think the other critical dynamic is one is the one that exists between employee and their manager and employees and their leadership. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't invest in those relationships, it's not going to work because it's it's just like any other kind of relationship. You got to you got to put into it what you're going to get out of it, mm -hmm. or you'll you get out of it what you put into it. 
Um, and I think the nurturing those relationships is really essential. And I think this, this makes for a safe environment. It makes an environment that people can actually show up with their whole selves if they feel that space and the connection and the support. I think everyone begins to thrive in that with, the, with that setting. Absolutely. And I think in regards to pivoting all the changes that we're seeing um, over the past two years as well, um, and kind of talent leaders also, I've heard throughout these conversations, having a really large seat at the table, there's so many prioritize that you priorities that you could be working on. Can you share, you know, some examples of how you've innovated your talent strategy over the past year? Uh, business as usual. I think you may hear my dog barking. I'm sorry. I did, I love it. <laughs> right. She's going to bark for a couple minutes. She's going out for a walk, so I apologize. <laughs> um, one of the fun advantages is working from home. Um, so if we really focus on the last year, two years, we've all had to pivot in significant ways. And I'm really proud of the work that Horizon has done during the pandemic and supporting the remote experience. Fortunately, Horizon has had such a tremendous culture and we needed to quit, quickly think about how do we recreate or reimagine that culture in a virtual way. And so one of the things that we did was we looked at what was working on site and how can we mimic that virtually? And we created something called the Horizon Connects. Mm -hmm. And we took our, our talk culture and we brought, it, we brought it online and we just basically mimicked it and then added to it. And we created more opportunities for connections. Certainly they were virtual connections, but it allowed everybody to stay connected. And that connectivity was really key during this time. And it's even gonna be more challenging now that we're starting to return because we knew how to do the physical culture really well. We've got two years, we rehabituated a new way of working and now we're gonna go back to a hybrid. So we still have a lot of work to do as we all start to return back to the office. We're not gonna be back to the office 100%. So how do we start to ensure that connectivity in, in a true hybrid state is, is one of the things that we're really spending a lot of time thinking about. I think, you know, the past year plus, year to two years, it was really about keeping the trains on the tracks. Like it was really essential, right? It wasn't so much about, um, well, it was about innovative innovation in a different way, but it was really keeping things, keeping everybody whole, so to speak. And I'm really proud that we, we didn't lay anybody off during the pandemic and we didn't furlough anybody. And so that, that says a lot about who we are as a culture and what it afforded us the opportunity to do was create new opportunities to reskill, new opportunities for employees to join different teams, gain different experiences and have a different exposure during this time. Like that was one of the gifts that we had as a result of COVID. And I think there's a lot of gifts, yes, a lot of curses and, and tragedy of COVID, but there are also a lot, of, a lot of gems coming out of this time. And our internal mobility numbers are up significantly. In fact, they're the highest they've ever been. Wow. And part of our talent philosophy is to ensure that employees can actually get in their flow state, meaning doing what they organically are aligned to do with their intrinsic drivers. And when you work against this, we know that productivity and innovation suffer. So our goal is to ensure that everyone gets in their flow state and we find the right, we match the right opportunities with the individuals based on who they are, what their intri intrinsic drivers are and their natural talents. And so that's part of the talent strategy currently and certainly moving forward. I think that is a really great accomplishment to highlight as well, that you're investing in your folks, internal mobility and just growth the moments of flow are really important. Um, I know we touched on this a little bit at the top of the conversation as well, but I've been reading, you know, that the advertising and media industries are facing a huge talent crunch, not like other industries as well. How are you dealing with kind of new talent coming in? What's the biggest challenge with recruiting uh, right now? We can spend the whole time on this topic. <laughs> yeah. we, we are in unprecedented times and I've been, in the agency um, landscape and in uh, for years, decades, decades. And I, every, I always find myself, this is the hardest talent market it's ever been. And I'm saying it now, but this is truly the most unprecedented time that I've experienced. And I think many of us would say, would share that sentiment. 
And I think what's interesting about where we are now is it's a year of compression. And what, what did and didn't happen in 20, in the early part of 21, is now happening this year and will carry into next year for sure. And it's, it's hard hitting and it's hard work. And just simply put, it's about supply and demand. Um, and so we are in somewhat of a revolutionary time as a result of the pandemic, because everything is on its head. What employees and candidates are looking for has changed. And I think it's quite revolutionary right now. And I think we're gonna see a whole new frontier of possibilities and a rethink and a reimagining what employers need to provide culturally and from an opportunity and what employees are, are looking for. And I think the key thing is about customization and personalization. It's really about ensuring the whole experience personally and through customization in the work in the work setting. So it's not, I, I, I like to think about hiring people for the company, not just for the job, because we know that people are, they want to change, they want to grow, they want to move. If we can establish that opportunity within Horizon and, and promote that as part of our recruiting added value, I think, I think that is and has contributed to the success of our numbers this year, because we are hiring at record levels more so than ever, than any other, any other year before. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole idea of customization, it's definitely harder. It is absolutely harder. Um, but if we don't do it, we're not going to be able to be able to recruit the talents that we need to and, and support the growth that we anticipate moving into next year. And next year is going to be no, no different. And I think it also goes back to um, the relevancy and being able to promote our brand and the relevancy of our brand to the marketplace. And fortunately, again, Horizon has a strong brand, um, but we can't rest on that. It can't just be about the Horizon brand. So one of the things that we've been doing to support the recruitment efforts is to bring in the entire organization. Don't just leave it to the hiring, the, the recruiting team and the people that are sourcing and bringing people into the organization, but really engaging the entire organization, employees, leaders, uh, getting everybody involved in the recruitment of and the courting of talent, because we're really looking, employees are looking at not just what the employer brand is, but what's the leadership brand, what's the team brand, what do we all stand for? And so that takes a collective effort to showcase to prospects who we are. And that includes Bill Konsberg, our CEO. He is very much involved in this and supporting that initiative and getting involved and helping us recruit because who better to do that than the CEO and founder of the organization. But the point is it's a high touch personalization approach uh, to bring talent into the company. Absolutely. People are looking for that personalized employee experience. You can find trends kind of over time of what people are looking for. But at the end of the day, it's having that conversation, really having that senior leadership buy in people, managers, everybody across the board who's creating this environment. Um, the other thing that we're seeing happening is many industries, especially those um, who require, you know, technical skills and perspectives are facing this kind of quote unquote skills gap. How does that apply to Horizon Media? It applies, <laughs> we, are, we are not exempt from that challenge. And based on our industry and how it has evolved to be more outcomes-based, the skills needed in data and analytics is so fiercely competitive. And it's and there's a real shortage across, across the board. And I think it's across all industries. So it is the most competitive space that we're seeing. And it's an example of how we have to it's one of the spaces where if we hire for strong cognitive ability and be able to teach, yeah. I think that'll, that'll help our ability to, to provide talent in that space. Um, it is it's fiercely competitive. And what's interesting from the agency perspective, historically agencies kind of recruited within our own kind of ecosystem, but because the skills that are needed it's not unique to advertising or media. It's across the board. It's every industry is looking for these types of the skill set. So right. we have to think about how do we how do we 
take our brand and cross over out of our ecosystem and be able to and be able to uh, track um, talent not just within advertising but across the board. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think that definitely makes sense. Um, and I think that that's one of the kind of many competing priorities that I'm sure that you're kind of thinking about on a daily basis. And you talked about this too, in terms of, you know, the continuing uncertainty, we're still in a global pandemic. And one of the kind of topics of conversation that is coming up is returning to an office space. How are you addressing that um, at Horizon Media today? We, we're in the thick of it now. Uh, we've been approaching this, I would say, a bit more, a bit conservatively to, to ensure the well-being and safety of our employees and our community, which is obviously paramount. And we have been open for um, majority of this year, three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and employees are able to come in on a voluntary basis. And we just have switched to what we're calling a cohort model which means each department is part of a cohort. So when you choose to come, and, and they have a, we have a designated day that we will be in the office. So for example, HR, and we're part of a, a cohort, we're coming in um, two Tuesdays of every month. So my team knows that if we're all gonna go in, let's go in when we all know that we're gonna be there together. And we just launched that this month and it's quite successful. And I had my first cohort day yesterday. And again, it's on a voluntary basis. I had half my department in and we had lunch together and it was just super great to see everybody real, in the real. And we're gonna see this model, this approach through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then we will start to have conversations next month uh, in November, what the return is going to be come January. Okay. It'll be a hybrid of some sort. Uh, we haven't yet said whether it's going to be a fixed amount of time. Right now, we're approaching it um, somewhat organically um, and seeing the numbers increase with people's comfort returning to the office. But we're going to continue to evaluate that through now and the end of the year. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like the hybrid cohort approach, I've heard like job functionality and team members, that definitely goes to your point around customization and personalization too. Um, and understanding that some folks can't wait to get out of their apartments or, you know, get out of their working space. Some people like working remotely. So having a healthy balance there. I know we talked about kind of your journey to kind of talent as well. Um, and then kind of the different skills and folks who are joining uh, media agencies in general. We know that, you know, people like banking and accounting professionals have a certain stereotypical profile. A uh, couple of friends need to take all these exams and there are these requirements. What's the profile of someone in the media agency business uh, from your perspective? Yeah, it, it's a great question because it also speaks to how we can promote our brand and start to recruit outside the agency ecosystem. Right. So I've really been thinking about well, what is it that Who's the person? What's the profile of the person that thrives in an agency? Because as we said earlier, it's not for the lighthearted. <laughs> and, and it does require um, a certain sort of, I'm going to say, grit and stamina. And, and the reason being, we're a service business and our focus is to be our client's most valued partner. So knowing that, that and we show up in spirit of our clients, the type of individual that does thrive in an agency is one that like, will likely like or thrive in unpredictability yeah. because not every day is the same. Like you don't, like every day is different. So you have to be comfortable being able to pivot and adapt based on the needs of our clients. Mm -hmm. um, deadlines are obviously key and the pressure that that adds. So that creates a certain adrenaline combined with the unpredictability. Uh, and somebody that really thrives working as a team versus an individual. I mean, yes, there's, we all have individual work, but the spirit of being able to deliver for our clients in the way that we need to requires collaboration and innovation and camaraderie and connection. And that is really, that is an attribute that I think contributes to the agency culture and who thrives in our, in our culture. Um, and I think, you know, we're a bunch of overachievers. Like, I think, I think, I think there's a lot of A plus personalities that are within the agency um, ecosystem. Because when you think of all the variables that come, that we've just talked about, um, 
you got to really be turned on by not what was, but what's possible and always looking forward and always stretching, and always innovating and not kind of resting on what was. That's the DNA of the person that really thrives within an agency. Yeah, being gritty, being comfortable with unpredictability and really leaning in, being self-proclaimed uh, overachievers. I think that definitely makes sense. And the folks that I'm thinking of who work at media agencies today too, and are really successful and leaning into their work. I wanna kind of get specific around the employee experience as well in terms of how you've really prioritized the team and how you've seen strategies really be progressive in the advertising industry space. So it's interesting because the answer is very comparable to what's gone on in advertising. So if you think years ago, probably pre-digital, the digital space, advertising was one to many. Now it's one to one, mm -hmm. like the targeting is one to one. And so when I think about the talent experience, and we've already talked about personalization and customization, it's no different for the employee experience. As leaders, as employers, we have to ensure that one-to-one -one experience. Mm -hmm. And that really gets to the customization. So I find the parallel quite fascinating and, 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 and quite relevant um, in terms of how we have to lead. So part of our, our um, philosophy is all about that customization. Mm -hmm. And again, it's much harder to do. Uh, but I, but it, it, it's essential. It's the only way it's going to work, in my view. And it's also about ensuring equity. And equity, we know, is such a big topic right now in the, in the space of diversity. And diversity, as we mentioned earlier, is all levels of diversity, all types of diversity matter. And so when I think about equity, and, and equity is, is a really interesting topic to really dig into, because it's not that everybody needs the same outcome or same journey, but they need the opportunity to have it what matters to them. Absolutely. And so that is what we're really trying to focus in on and ensuring that. And it's not easy. It is absolutely not easy. But if we get it right and we have the right mindset and approach towards ensuring an equitable experience and a personalized experience and take into consideration one's lifestyle, which includes their working, then we, we're, we, it, it will help our retention, it will help our brands, it will create, create experiences that really matter for those people within our community. Absolutely. I think equity is such an essential part of an employee experience strategy, thinking about everybody's, you know, personal experiences coming into the workplace now uh, as well. And that customization piece, again, is coming up. And I want to know how that relates to kind of how you think about retention strategies and kind of key areas of that employee experience to really check in with folks and make sure that, you know, they're having the ideal inclusive uh, experience where they belong and can do their best work. Yeah, it's interesting because retention, there's been over the years, it's all about retention. What are we doing for retention? And I think a lot about this and I've moved away from retention as its own. Retention is not, it's, it's, not, um, it's not one thing. Right. It's, it's, it's everything that we do. It's the outcome of everything that we're talking about. So it's all these, the high touch, it's ensuring everything that we've really talked about from the minute that we start our first connection to somebody in the marketplace all the way through, it's yeah. the relationships with the managers, it's being able to show up with your whole selves, it's being creating a safe environment. So it's all those ingredients is what contributes to having a strong um, culture, which equates to retention. But it is, it is harder now than ever before because of the marketplace, because of what's going on. And I worry a bit that the marketplace is driving a more transactional experience. Yeah. And what we're talking about here and the, the focus, it, it feels a little repetitive because I keep saying the same thing, but it is about the relationship. It is about the networking and the, and the community that we're building. And what's happening right now in the marketplace because of the demands for talents, it's becoming very transactional. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, I'm very fascinated and, and can't wait to see what's gonna play out throughout 22 
and 23, the outcome of what is being used right now in the market to recruit. And we have to hold on to what we know to be true, mm -hmm. but it's, it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. Nobody has a, a crystal ball, so we have to work with what we have. I know I asked a bunch of questions around your personal journey to this work and your strategy at Horizon Media. And now I have kind of some curiosity around, you know, just trends you're seeing in the market. So speaking of the future and knowing that we don't know what's to come with the information we have right now, what is something that you think companies need to include in their talent strategy to be successful in the future and be competitive? So something that just came up for me um, when I was sp speaking with um, somebody in the business who was faced with many opportunities, and we know that everybody's getting many opportunities, so there's mm -hmm. choice. And we know that the brand is important. We know that who you work for, not just the company, but the individual is important. We know the team that you're going to be working with is important. And if we can provide that value, we're not going to be able to retain our people. Mm -hmm. And so when people, some employers might start hissing at me for what I'm about to say, but I think there's something interesting about creating references for ourselves to share with candidates and really flipping the whole reference idea on its head. Because we do know right now, everything is on its head. Everything is completely turned upside down because of what's gone on over the past two years. And I think about it, like if I'm joining another company, how do I really know who I'm going to be working with? Absolutely. And so this idea of creating references of our current employees, yes, we continue to check references, but I want to be able to showcase people coming in in a very tangible way and it's going to be tricky how to do it, who, who they're working for and how do they get a true understanding? Because that puts our, that puts all of us in on a higher level of accountability, one to kind of understand who we are, how we show up, what do we stand for as leaders and how do we promote that to the candidates so they can make the best informed choice about who they want to work for. So this is just something that I've been thinking about. Um, I kind of, I'm intrigued by the, the prospect of it and I think because it's such a talent first market right now, we really have to be thinking of ways to differentiate ourselves in order to ensure that relevancy so that people want to come and work at Horizon. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's an incredible idea because I know personally for me, I want to know who I'm working with. And I've definitely asked folks who worked with previous managers and kind of current team members how they would describe them. So I think operationalizing that would be great for this talent first market that we're in right now. Are there any mistakes that you've seen leaders make in the advertising industry with their talent strategy? So maybe like cautionary tales, of course, not giving away, you know, names or anything like that, just generally. Yeah, I think um, because we're in the service business, clients are everything, right? We, we service our clients to, to support their brands and support their objectives. And we need to also think about our employees like clients. Mm -hmm. And I think it's no different. I think the way we treat our employees should mimic the, what we, how, we treat our, how we treat our clients. And sometimes that always hasn't been the case over the years. I think it's evolved in a more positive light. I think there's a greater focus on the employee experience. Obviously, that's what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a cautionary um, <laughs> or moment to really think about it through this lens of the, the equity and the quality of employee and client. Because if you don't have, you need client, you can't do one without the other. And we know that the marketplace is so tight right now that we really have to ensure that high touch personalization for our employees. So we've evolved as an industry, I think for sure, but I think there's more work to be done. I think that makes sense because, you know, the team or they're on the front lines when working with the customers and clients and making sure that they're doing their best work is really important. It's a great asset to the company. And I've heard a lot of leaders talk about how employees are um, kind of like internal customers to the team as well. Um, I mean, what keeps you up at night? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, I think mostly really navigating the revolution and what's coming down down the line yeah. here. I think it's a very exciting time. I'm very jazzed by it. I get turned on by what is possible and yeah. reimagining how we can ensure that relevancy. Uh, but being able to continue to hire at the pace that we have been and also retaining the people that we've hired yeah. this year is going to be challenging because it one, it's significant numbers in terms of hire, the amount of hiring that we've done and all of the hiring has been done remotely. So how we start to recalibrate the experience for the, the, the tenured employees as well as the newer employees and how we as an employer have to provide that customization. And what does that look like, not only in terms of one's professional trajectory, but also their personal trajectory as well, because the two go hand in hand. Like there is, it's, it's one. Yeah. And their employees are looking to us for so much more than ever before, and particularly with the focus of diversity and ensuring that everything we're doing is with the spirit of inclusivity and belonging does require us to really challenge the way we've thought about everything. Mm -hmm. And so that that's what keeps me going. Yeah, I mean, that's enough to keep you keep you going. That's a big, <laughs> uh, a big topic as well. Is there anything that I either, you know, didn't ask you or a key takeaway you want to hold underline italicized for our audience listening today? Well, I think it's I think it's an exciting time. I, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity to recreate the the, the partnership between employees and employers. Mm -hmm. And we've we've been here before to some degree, if you think about the evolution of the the value proposition over the years, we are at a pivotal point where we are it's a reset. It's a reset okay. on every level. And just keep in mind what is happening and not to lose sight of the gifts of this past two years and kind of try to revert back to what was, but really focus on what's possible. I think that's gonna be key as we, as we move into 2022 and beyond. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree. And I think that is a good kind of call to action to kind of cap off our conversation as well. Eileen, thank you so much for being on Reimagining Company Culture. Thank you, Christina. Of course. And as a reminder for folks who are listening and all voices, we believe in employee feedback management as a requirement for the company to succeed on a whole. Have a good rest of your afternoon, everyone.